When we got the offer to do this opera, of course, the first um, impulse is just joy because, I mean, to, to have a, how do you say, recreation of a piece that was never being played uh, right now in these times, it was, it's, a, it's an enormous challenge, but also a big chance. And as I said, uh, a joy. And um, first of all, you don't have music to listen to, to prepare. That's also very unusual. Because usually when you have a commission for a new opera or like a creation, what this is a bit, <laughs> you, you work uh, with music and libretto. And here we, we didn't have anything really. We had a libretto and we knew that we want to keep um, as much as possible because it was the first or it's the first time that it's played. So you don't want to cut too much music or too much of the, of the uh, story. So the approach is, of course, um, and the first um, thought is to tell the story to the audience and not to do a modern interpretation and cutting and uh, um, adding too many extra uh, stories. So it's actually the basic main story you want to tell and uh, to follow the piece. You've got this uh, story about Achille in Skiro, and the story itself is also, it's already very interesting. And, um, but we, um, you always need an approach of, of the, for the story. How do you want to tell the story? And uh, we were thinking, because the, the opera was composed for the marriage of, of the queen, of the, of the Spanish um, princess to marry the French dauphin. And we thought that the story of a man who is disguising himself as a woman to not go to the war, but then to decide to go to war and by knowing that he will die maybe, and then he's just marrying a woman he's, he's in love with just before he goes to war, is not the best, um, I don't know, issue for a young, innocent uh, woman be just before he, she, she gets married. So that's also a thing we wanted to tell, that um, the, 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 the occasion when this opera was composed, so not just the story about Achille, but also the story of, of the princess for which uh, marriage this whole thing was composed. Um, a Baroque music or opera is, as you said, it's open. You can interpret it. You can just say, you just tell the story and you go in the antique, for example. But you can also do it very modern and you can continue to tell, tell the story and it will work. But in this case, we, we decided to uh, find a known language that gives the beauty of the music and not to uh, break it because you could also decide you have a Baroque music, beautiful music, but you do it in, in the modern world. But this time we, we wanted to have a beautiness in this whole opera to um, give a chance to the audience to like it. I mean, just not to think about it all the time, but just enjoy it. And we do kind of, I mean, there are a lot of levels with uh, Mariam we never do one direction or we do in the times of 80s or now or whenever. It's more like um, open, you can symbolize it in a very different way. So we, but the main um, approach was to make it like a dream, actually. So that the, um, the, the, the singers or the, the roles on stage is a bit in a dream. So also for the audience, it could be like a dream. And then you can add or you can tell um, still things about human beings and about love and about passion and about because you are m really free to to show it because in a dream you can just jump in between scenes without too much explanation to get an atmosphere I mean this is um, that's actually the word we wanted to have for this production the atmosphere to and um, as I said that we wanted to um, bring the story of the princess uh, of the Spanish princess of, for what this uh, opera was composed for her, for the marriage, that we wanted to keep these two times uh, to bring it together. So we have Achille in Antique, but we have also the princess in the 18th century. And um, with a set, I, well, we tried to, to create an atmosphere or an environment where both could uh, be. So, and um, we were looking, we did a research of where, what can we do, how can it be? And then we, we thought it's quite interesting that in the 18th century, uh, the, especially the, the rich houses, the kings, and they, they made 
kind of, um, uh, how do you say, love grotte, grotte, I don't know the English word, a grotte, that you do like a love grotte for, uh, to play in and also to have romantic moments. And uh, that's actually what, how we start. So you, you see this little princess just before her marriage entering this kind of, is it artificial or is it real? Is it a dream or not? And then suddenly you have these people from the antique coming in and you can think, is it her dream? Or is it real? Or is it a play? So all the interpretations are very open. And the atmosphere is, of course, more dreamy. And also for the costumes, that was a decision. And uh, because it's very tempting to, to kind of break it and to say you have a wonderful atmospheric environment, but you do human beings from today. But we definitely wanted to have the antique people in it and the mythology and this dream effect. So we, we wanted, and it was a challenge for me as a costume designer, create an old world. And also we, we, um, we worked a lot with Mathieu, our choreograph, because when I do costumes in this very dreamy way, how do they move? So we decided very early to be in our team to work in, with movements and costumes and wigs and makeup to have this dream effect in this very weird environment of a grotto. The challenge for this opera to, to create an own language and to have a dream world uh, is challenging also for me to find the right language and the right costumes and fabric and it has to come together with wigs and makeup and everything. And of course you start or I start with some fantasy drawings and uh, quite concrete but then when you approach or when you come together with the workshops then the work starts and I was so happy and I'm still enjoying every fitting and every day because they were so open and this is not always the case because everything was different cut, uh, fabric, uh, how to, to bring fabrics together also especially for wigs and, and makeup we, we, we had to talk a lot just that they understood in which direction I want to go but also I'm just as good as they are. So the moment they understood my kind of crazy ideas and they bring it to life, then it works. And it was, it was really like, like, uh, like a celebration when we all found, found out that it, it works together. So costume and makeup and fabric and everything. And then the singer, when you start with the fitting, um, that they all were so open to do experiments and to, to not go the safe way or just the normal way when you do uh, a dress or, or wig. So uh, they had a lot of hours, I think, just to find out, found out, find out just how they can show these ideas. And it was, uh, was just a joy, it was just pleasure. I wouldn't say there's a classical element in it. As I said, it's the decision that you do costumes especially, because I think the easiest that you say it's a classical or historical or modern in interpretation of the directing team are the costumes. So if you're very clear, if even you have a black box or you have a grotte or you have a realistic set, the moment you have costumes in Rococo or you have costumes in modern, that shows a bit the time. And we are losing this. So we don't have any timing. We have antique meets Rococo and meets fantasy. So I think you cannot say it's classical, but I think that people, they expect something more classical can be happy. <laughs> and people, they look for some modernity because of interpretation can be happy because both is in there. So it's not just what we know, it's something new. And let's hope that the people enjoy it. So the challenge, of course, I mean, you, the moment you decide to do uh, to do a fantasy world and you to create your own language, um, you start with a vision and you start with some ideas. And then the moment you meet with the people, they realize it. Um, I like it and also Mariam to be open also to have to use other ideas. I mean, you just uh, continue, you do uh, create it together. And um, I'm very, so, I mean, I don't know how it will be in the end, let's see. But I'm, I'm very looking forward to see also the light and we will have the movements, as I said, and we have the singers with the beautiful music. And um, yeah, I hope that it's a dream, a dreamy evening. <laughs> the interesting part of Baroque music, always of Baroque music, that you have, of course, men singing with 
female voices and sometimes male roles, sometimes uh, female roles. And in this case, especially, and that's the comedy, it's not just, a, I, I think it's also a tragedy, but it's also a comedy, because um, Achille has to pretend to be a woman. And of course, there are a lot of funny parts in it. And then you have, but also Ulyssa, who is the hero, is also a counter, so very high voice. And you have to meet with these voices, it's so interesting. And then you have the, 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 the prince who is asking the princess to marry him. He is a, a boy, a man, but he's sang by a, a woman. So again, there's a double, double uh, mixture of uh, genders. And that's actually the nice part of it, that it's not, a, it's not difficult, it's more um, interesting and also for the singers to play with this. The concept of the idea um, of the whole opera is that we start with the princess, the Spanish princess, and we want to end with the marriage, actually, and the whole royal family is coming. And we want to end in a tableau so that um, we have followed the story and the comedy and tragedy of uh, love and uh, marriage and uh, war. And uh, we wanted to end in the historical context. And the Spanish family is not 100% realistic. So I, I, of course we had um, as inspiration or also for research, we have a lot of pictures of the royal family. But uh, for example, we add the, the French Dauphin. So we don't, it, that was not realistic. So usually he wasn't here <laughs> in Spain, but we want to show this couple. So we have in the very end as a tableau, we have Achille and Deidamia and we have the princess and the prince as a couple and but surrounded by the Rococo family. And just to, to bring the arc together that we started with her, the dreamy, and she's still marrying in the end. That's why that the idea came from. It was so um, inspiring to, to, to do, especially this project here, to have the chance to do a creation of a Baroque music with workshops that work like this, because I, also the set is very delicate and very, not easy to realize, and everybody gave everything into it, like um, finding the right material, finding the right workshops to do it, and never stopped like um, believing in it. Because you could also say, oh, this is just crazy, we cannot do it, or it's too expensive, or I don't know how to realize, because the, it's always, I mean, the, 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 everybody is so behind this project, it feels very good. And it's not often the case, I have to say. It's very special in this house. Everybody's very warm and professional and open, and it's a pleasure to work here.